This is Math 101 50 Lesson 2, and in this video we will be doing operations on functions. We will be combining functions with addition, addition subtraction, multiplication, and division, and we also be combining functions by composition. So, operations on functions And we're going to use function notation. So if we want to add two functions or combine them via addition, we have f of x plus g of x. We can combine them as f plus g of x. Now this notation may appear confusing at first, but f plus g is the name of the new function, just like f and g were names of the old function, we can have subtraction similarly to addition. If we have one function, we want to subtract from it another function. It has a new name called f minus g, and we apply it to the input x. We also have multiplication of functions. If we want to multiply two functions, f and g. The result is a new function called fg, and we apply that to x. Likewise, if we want to divide two functions, we have f of x divided by g of x, a division of two functions. We create a new function called f bar g, and we apply it to x, and there's a small disclaimer that g of x can't be zero, otherwise the example doesn't make sense. These are the four basic operations and functions. Another operation on functions is the composition of functions. Composition of functions is a bit more sophisticated and we can do composition in two ways. So one way is we can combine f composed with g and we signify that by a little circle between f and g. It's another operation. And for this operation, we input g inside of f of x. We can also compose functions in a different order and most often get a different result. g composed with f, we take the function g and in its input, we put the output of f. So in this video, we're going to be do, doing examples of combining functions using these operations. So in example one, we're asked to do the following. So let a function f of x be x squared minus x minus 2, and another function g of x is x plus 1, and we are asked to find a new function f plus g evaluated at the number negative 3. Now there is at least two methods of doing this, and I will do this with both methods. So first, method, method 1. So method one, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to compute the function f plus g of x and then evaluate that at negative one. So how does that look like? I'm going to say, well, this function that I need to figure out what its value at negative three is, this is the sum of the functions f and g. And I know what f and g are. This is x squared minus x minus 2 plus x plus 1. So this is x squared minus x minus 2 plus x plus 1. I can combine the like terms. The x and the minus x cancel. And I get x squared minus 1. So what I get is that I get a general expression for this new function, f plus g. It is x squared minus 1. 
And now I'm going to evaluate my new function. at negative 3. So plug in a negative 3 wherever I see an x, and I'm going to get that this is 9 minus 1, which is 8. So for the final answer, I have f plus g at negative 3 gives me the output 8. So this is the final answer. Uh, method two is a slightly different approach. In method two, I'm going to say, well, um, I know that f plus g at negative three is going to be f at negative three plus g of negative three. So instead of figuring out the general algebraic expression for f plus g, I'm just going to evaluate f at negative 3 and evaluate g at negative 3 and then add them. So I compute them separately. f at negative 3 is negative 3 squared minus negative 3 minus 2. This is 9 plus 3 minus 2 which is 10, so f of negative 3 is 10. And then I compute g of negative 3, that's negative 3 plus 1, which is 2. And so I have that f plus g at negative 3 is going to be 10 plus negative 2, which is again 8. So as before, I get the same answer as I should be. f plus g at negative 3 is 8. You can choose any method you want to do it. Um, any one of them is fine. Let's do another problem. Let f of x be 2x minus 1, and g of x is x plus 4, and we are asked to find the multiplicative function f times g evaluated at 3. And again, we can do this in two methods, similarly as before. In the first method, we observe that f of g of x is just f of x times g of x. So we're going to compute the multiplication of f of g, this new function f of g in its general form. So f of x is 2x minus 1, g of x is x plus 4, so I'm going to FOIL this out. I'm going to get 2x squared minus x plus 8x minus 4. I combine the like terms and I get 2x squared plus 7x minus 4. So I have computed what f of g of x is, but I need f of g of 3x. So now that I have the general form for f of g, I now plug in 3 of x into my expression, and I have 2 times 3x squared plus 7 times 3x minus 4, which gives me... 2 times 3 squared is 18. 18x squared plus 21x minus 4. And this is my final answer. Method 2. I 
I'm going to approach it in a slightly different way. I'm going to say, well, I need f of g of 3x. f of g of 3x is f of 3x times g at 3x. And what is f of 3x? Well, f of 3x is what I get when I plug in 3x instead of x. So this is 2 times 3x minus 1, which is 6x minus 1. This is g of 3x. This is going to be 3x plus 4. So now I multiply what I have, f of g of 3x is 6x minus 1, which is f of x, times g of x, which is 3x plus 4. Again, I foil this out. This is 18x squared minus 3x plus 24x minus 4, giving me 18x squared plus 21x minus 4. Again, the same exact thing as I had before, as expected. These are just two different ways of doing the same problem. In the first method, as in this example and the previous example, I figured out the general form for the new function, and then I plugged in what I needed to plug in into that general form. For method two, I figured out what the individual functions evaluate at the point or the variable that I needed to evaluate at. I evaluated the individual functions and then performed the operation on them and got the answer. In the next example, we're going to be doing composition of functions. So um, we have two functions, f of x equals x squared minus 5x, and g of x equals 4x plus 4. And what we're going to do is we're going to find f composed with x and g composed with x. And two compositions, composing functions in different orders, will most often get us different things. So first part, we want to find f composed with g, which is f of g of x. So I'm going to plug in g of x anywhere I see um, an x in f of x. So what is g of x? g of x is 4x plus 4. So I'm going to plug in 4x plus 4 everywhere I see an x in my expression for f. So I'm going to plug in And what is my, what is the form of f of x? It is something squared minus 5 times something squared. So this is 4x plus 4 squared minus 5 times 4x plus 4. This is the composition, but usually I want to simplify my answer. So I'm going to foil, foil this out. 16x squared plus 32x, the sum of the two middle terms, plus 16, and then I'm going to distribute the 5 minus 20x minus 20. Combining the like terms, I have 16x squared plus 12x Minus 4. And so this is the final answer for part A. Um, this is the simplified version of completely simplified composition of f of g of x. In part B, 
I'm going to do the other composition, G composed with F. So this is G. composed with f of x and I expect a different answer usually when I compose things in different order for most functions the answer is going to be different so what is f of x? f of x is x squared minus 5x so I'm going to plug in x squared minus 5x anywhere I see an x in the expression for g what is my function g? My function g takes x, multiplies it by 4, and adds 4 to it. So wherever I see an x in g of x, I'm going to put in x squared minus 5x. And now I can simplify it. This is 4x squared minus 20x plus 4. And this is my final answer for composing G with F. And the most common mistake is to confuse composition with multiplication. So I'm going to kind of write a special note. Don't confuse composition. of functions with multiplication of functions. F times G and F composed with G are two completely different things. Um, if we wanted to compute f times g here, we would just multiply x squared minus 5x times 4x plus 4, but that's not what we're doing here. We are composing the two functions. And the order in which we're composing makes a difference.